Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8. We're going to look at verses 5 through 13, Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 13. The title of the message is, What Happens When You Stop Sinning for a Long Time? What Happens When You Stop Sinning for a Long Time? Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 13. What happens when you stop sinning for a long time? The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 5, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. But for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Brother Jack, can you please pray for the message? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for gathering us here to listen to your word. We ask you that you would fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit, given the authority from all high and the liberty to declare your word unto us. Amen. Break our hearts, Lord God. Yes, please. We need to change each and every one of us in this wicked world, Lord. Help us to fully give ourselves unto your word and to the preaching. Amen. Help us not to think of anything that's happening outside or happening in our lives, but help us just focus on you and your word. Fill everyone here with your Holy Spirit Amen. and those who are not saved, pray that you will convict their hearts so yes, that Lord. they can get saved today. Amen. We thank you and love you. Protect us from devil's attacks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So what happens when you stop sinning for a long time? One thing we have to get it out of the way is that as a human being, until the day of the rapture, until you know you see the Lord, you will never stop sinning. So there are two dots to it. You know, some charismatics out there think that, you know, you're going to lose your salvation if you don't speak in tongues, if you don't see Jesus Christ, you know, in your dreams. But there's some other factions out there think that you can't sin anymore. You know, half truth to it. If you trusted Jesus Christ and if you're in Christ, like the verses that we read, Honestly, you can't really sin. The real you cannot commit sin. Who's the real you, by the way, right? The real you is your soul. Your soul is the real you. And if you've done some Bible studies, you know there's a body, soul, and spirit. Just like God is Trinity, you are three parts. What I see is your physical body. What's in you which is soul, which is eternal, is real you. And there's a spirit. When we're born into this world, we're born with that spirit because we're born as sinners because of Adam and Eve. That's why born again from what? Born again from devil's spiritual family into God's spiritual family. That's what born again Christian really means. Yesterday at the street preaching, I was talking to one of the gentleman who was just walking by. His name was Kevin. 
And I said, you go to any church? He goes, yeah, I go to AA. I guess, you know, he goes to Alcoholics Anonymous. That's like a consider his church to him. And we, we, had, we talked for a little bit. But he had open heart. And he didn't really know what he, he didn't, he thought he was going to heaven because he went to church. Many people think that they go to heaven because they go to church. Right. There's got to be so many people out there at the judgment, millions of people who are deceived by the devil and false preachers and false teachers. They thought they will be in heaven, in the right judgment, judgment seat of Christ, but instead they're at the white throne judgment, the judgment that will send billions of people straight down to hell. So, I mean, thankfully, you know, he heard the gospel, he accepted the Christ, hey. got saved, and then he went his way. Many people are confused. And I'm saved, so I can't commit sin. Then why should I care about sin? Let's look at Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6, verse 1. So some people have this idea. I'm saved. I trusted Jesus Christ from the bottom of my heart. Good. But you know what? My pastor, my teacher told me that I cannot sin anymore. Why should I go to church? You know, on a Sunday, nice Sunday afternoon, I'm going to go to the golf range. I'm going to go to the golf ring somewhere. I'm going to play golf. I'm going to go to the beach. You know, I'm going to go to the mountains. You know, what's to it? You know, I could just do whatever I want. Look at Romans chapter 6, verse 1. The Bible says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So you got saved. You trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then you have all the right to just commit sin. No, look at verse 2. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? The Bible says you're dead to sin. Amen. You know? Your flesh is a dead being. It's crucified with Christ. So when you listen to your flesh, when you do the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and when you're full of pride of life, you're just pleasing your flesh. Dead thing. I, if I, I don't know about you. I don't want to be that person who goes to cemeteries out there and worship those dead beings. No. Right? But well, you need to consider your flesh as a dead being. Amen. Because at the end of the day, you know, if Lord were to come back today, you're going to get rid of this flesh once and for all. Yes. And you're going to have a Christ-like body. Amen. But until then, you got to deal with your flesh. That's why what happens when you stop sinning for a long time? You cannot stop sinning. Let's get that out of the way. Sure. You have to understand that, you know, I'm still weak. Yes. Some people become so proud. You know what? I haven't killed anybody. I haven't robbed anybody. You know, I didn't commit adultery. You know, no right. fornication. So I'm pretty good. Yeah. No, that's the biggest, you know, sinner out there. Amen. You're just like Pharisees out there, yeah. right? On the outside, you're pretty clean. You know who's really clean outside? A lot of Jehovah's Witnesses are very clean. <laughs> Man, you know, a few of the best friends that I had, they were all Jehovah's Witness. They dress well. They talk politely and properly. You know, they keep the family life very clean. But one thing they're missing, they're missing salvation. Right. They're missing the right doctrine. Yes. So they're very zealous at what they do. But inside, they have full of, what, what should I say, that pride, mm -hmm. right? I know this doctrine about Hades. I know this doctrine about non-hell. I know this doctrine about Jesus Christ is not God, right? And then, of course, they take some verses out of the Bible out of context, and then they do the circular reasoning, go round and round and round. And then they, won't, they don't want to hear anything. So they don't have any open-mindedness. And that's full of pride in their life. Yes. You know what? Whatever you tell me, even if you show me from the New Living Translation that, you know, Jesus is God, there's a literal place of hell, I can't believe it. Because that's not how I was taught when I was yeah. growing up. Many Christians come from that kind of background. 
except for, you know, fortunate ones, young people who grew up in the church because their family were Bible believers, many of them who's listening and who's sitting here, you came from those type of background. You came from charismatic, you came from Calvary Chapel, you came from, you know, Catholic, you came from, yes. I don't know, whatever you came from. Yes. But now you were in false doctrine, you were in, you know, those straight down to hell. Yeah. Road to hell, but Lord gave you grace. You're seeking the truth. Amen. You found the truth, and Thank now you, you have eternal life. Thank Why? You. Through the Word of God. Perfect yes. Word of God, which is King James Bible. Woo. Then we know that from the Word of God we just read that we are still fighting against our sinful nature, yes. which, the, which is the flesh. That's why you will never understand true joy of Christianity unless you stop sinning. You have to stop sinning for a long time. You know, I've, I've been saved for a little bit, you know. But I, I've been saved for, let's see, how many years now? You know, so I got saved back in, you know, like 1998, you know, 1998, before I turned 18. I'm, I might have been, but that's when I knew for sure that I got saved, you know, back in 19, you know, 98. Like, and I knew... Since then, if I did not stop sinning for a long time, I never had joy as a Christian. You will never have joy as a Christian if you don't stop sinning. And it has to be a long time. Yeah. Many people have a temporary measure. So today, your heart is open to the Lord, and then you listen to preaching, including myself, and then you get convicted. You have Holy Spirit conviction. And you decide and you commit that you're not going to do certain sins anymore. But how long does it really last? Right? Yeah. If it lasts for a week, two weeks, it's not enough. Amen. If does it last for one month, it's not enough. It has to be continuous. Amen. I mean, you should stop sinning. You should have stopped sinning certain sins that have held you back with the right relationship with the Lord. Yes. For years and years and years. Amen. Just because you're saved doesn't mean that you're going to become suddenly, you know, Apostle Paul. You know, some people have that wrong idea. You know what? I'm, I accepted Christ. Lord's going to bless me tremendously. He will, but it's up to you. He will if you decide to follow the Spirit instead of the flesh. How, what was life? Okay, so everyone has issues with sin. You have issues with sin. Yes. So if it comes to lust of the flesh, right? Some people are weak at, you know, lust of the flesh. Yes. They can't stop touching people they're not supposed to touch, including themselves, right? And then they have sinful desires. Like you look at opposite sex. Nowadays, even same sex, right? Yeah. You have those dirty thoughts. Wicked. And then you look at some dirty images on the internet or wherever you go, sure. right? Those things will always be haunting you. Why? Because you're a flesh. Amen. Because devil knows what you like. If you did it even once in your life, I guarantee you, you've done it at least 100 times in your life. Yeah. Why? Because that's sin. Amen. Don't tell me that you lusted after a woman in the past and you haven't done it after that one time. Yeah. If you're not close to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are not stop sinning, you are doing it continuously. It doesn't matter whether you are old Christian, young Christian, middle Christian. It doesn't matter if you are, you know, saved for a little bit or for a long time because that lust of the flesh, that sinful desire that you have will never go away That's until you get rid of this flesh once and for all. Yes. Hopefully, they have the rapture comes soon Amen. so that our body will be Redeem once and for all. Yes. But until then, you're going to fight it. When was the last time, as parents, you ever checked your children's computer, cell phone? Check everything. That's your duty as a parent. If they live under your roof, they're 18 and under, you have to control them. Yes. It's not about privacy. They don't need no privacy. I mean, what kind of privacy do they need? Not Lock the door? No. They do whatever they want from midnight to whatever the time it is? No. You know, a lot of good Christian homes, they have computer outside in the living room. 
A lot of Christian homes, you know, they do parental blocking on the cell phones of children so that they won't look at dirty stuff. It's crazy nowadays how this, all these pop-up ads just pop up. Yes. Do you think your children don't experience that? They experience it all the time. Yes. And you think your children are so holy and naive that they don't do anything with it? They click it. Yeah. That's why so many children, even from the youngest of the elementary, and obviously by the time you're in high school, you're like the most perverted mind ever, you deal with this stuff, then how are you going to stop? How are you going to stop sinning? How are you going to help your children stop sinning? Block it off once and for all. Why does Bible say abstain from all appearance of evil? You have to run away from it. You have to stop it from coming into your eyes. Why? Because lust of the eyes is possessing things that you don't need. Like so many things. Okay, you see a beautiful woman and you see a handsome man. Do you need that person? No. If you're married or if you're in a relationship? No. Why do you want those people? Because of the lust of the eyes. Then how can you not think about it when you stop yourself from looking at it? Right? You have to stop it. If your cell phone is such a destructive device to you, what's the solution? Get rid of it. Go, go get like iPhone 1 or something, you know, or like Blackberry, Nokia from back in the 2000s. Yeah, where Pager, you know, I used to work with Pagers, right? You know, I, I, I got a Pager during my work, you know, I go to the payphone and, you know, call people. You need to go to those days for, so that it will stop you from sinning. I mean, so many people fall into not only those lustful sins, as Christians I'm talking about, I'm not talking about, you know, God forsaking, you know, those hellbound sinners out there. I'm talking about Christian homes, right? Because so many Christian homes are breaking apart. Even though you call yourself Bible believer, even though you say, I believe in the word of God, you don't do what he says because you're continuously sinning. Don't say lightly that I'm a Bible believer when you don't even do what the Bible says. Because what, you, what comes out of your mouth, you're going to be accountable for it. Yes. That's why you always have to watch what your heart thinks. Because eventually, what your heart thinks will come out. True. Right? You're like, oh, I'm going to hide this from my husband. I'm going to hide this from my wife. I'm going to hide this from my parents. But you know what? When the time is right, God will reveal it. Right. God's not going to let you get away with it. Amen. I mean, Pharaoh's heart showed itself. And what happens after he disobeyed God? God hardened his heart because of his action. You don't want to get to a point where you constantly disobey God and God and God, and even your heart is hardened. That's why you see some Christians out there. How can they backslide to the point worse than non-Christians? Because they kept on disobeying God, rebellious, 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 Holy Spirit conviction. They don't care. So what happens? It's over. I mean, it's like, okay, your chance is gone. And the Lord has to chastise you. I mean, again, when Lord chastises you, don't think that it's just a little slap, you know. Right. It's not. You're going to have scars for your life. Yes. So when we go back to it, you think about it. What are you doing, you know, with your phones? If you don't do anything about your phones, you're going to continue to sin. Yeah. I mean, it's a serious question to everybody. I mean, if, if, your phone is continue, if your cell phone is making you sin, you have to make some serious decision. Amen. Right? Yes. I mean, get yourself an old, old phone. I mean, you're like, oh, man, preacher, you know, I witness to people. Yeah? Like, how much time do you witness mm-hmm. on your phone? Right? right? Don't right. tell me, like, I, I, majority of my time I spend on the phone, you know, you know I, I try to live godly and stuff. Right? Even if you're like one in a million who does that, but what about the other few percentage, right? What do you do? I mean, you're full of sin during those times. I mean, if you truly want to be holy, if you truly want to stop sinning for a long period of time, either you get rid of all the apps that commit you sinning. I mean, just get rid of it. It's like, there's a, I don't know, there's so many casino apps out there. Like a, a lot. I mean, every time you do it, there's like a solitaire app 
right? Yeah. Pops up, they say, oh, you're gonna make easy money. You know, that's how devil wants to entice you. Oh, just download it, you know, spend some dollars and then, just you know, you're gonna become a millionaire tomorrow, right? Yeah. And you're like, oh yeah, you know, I'm curious. So you download it, right? And then, you know, everybody makes mistakes, okay? So don't judge others based on, you know, oh yeah, that brother, that sister, they're the worst. You know, you're saying, right? Amen. If you'd done it, probably you'd have just burned the house down, you know, or something with the getting into those issues. So people do fall into it. They do it. Then, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to just stay there? Get rid of it. Erase, erase. I, I know. You guys, if you know how to download it, you could delete it. But you have to stop once and for all. If some chatting app is causing you to sin, whether it's Snapchat, whether it's some other chat, Facebook, you know, Instagram, it's just causing you to sin, you got to get rid of it. Yes. Why do you have it? I mean, it's like this. You're walking time bomb. Yes. Like a lot of, for a lot of people, cell phones are like walking time bomb, right? You know what devil does? When you're down and out, I don't know, maybe you and your spouse like fought, right? And suddenly you get a message from a long lost love, right? From when during your high school days. What? I mean, suddenly, right? They're like, man, I hate my wife, I hate my husband. At that moment, yeah, you guys probably do. Because you're human beings. Emotions are running high. But does that mean that you're going to be unfaithful? It's not physical we're talking about. From your heart, you're going to be unfaithful at that moment, and you're going to start talking to people that you're not supposed to. Even that little single line is going to ruin you. Yes. Because it's like a seed of fire. You know, we, we're Santa Ana, fire season. It doesn't just blow up thousands and hundreds of thousands of acres. No, it starts from that one seed, right? It's going to start. So before it starts, you got to stop. You know why? Because you're so weak. You start, you can't stop until you go through the full cycle of sin. That's how weak you are as a human being. That's how weak I am as a human being, right? You go, to, I'm going to go to Vegas, you know, and then I'm going to serve the Lord. I don't know what you do. And then suddenly you're walking by the casinos everywhere. You know what? I have this 10 cents. You know, let me just play that slot just once. As they say, there's always beginner's luck, right? Mm-hmm. You know, Satan entices you on it. And then you win some money and you get addicted. And suddenly, you know, you lose everything overnight. And then you're like, oh, Lord, you know, you hate me. You know, my purpose was to bring more money to the church. You know, my purpose was to help the needy, but you ruined me. God will never compromise. You know, Bob Jones Sr. said always, right? It is never right to do wrong in order to do right. You know, what could have stopped you? Just avoid it. Don't do it. I mean, when it comes to sin, you just have to avoid it. You have to run away from it. As easy as it sounds and as hard as it is to do, you have to do it. It's like, oh, yeah, if I go to that place, there's a likelihood or there's even a small chance that I'm going to commit sin. Then don't go. Yeah. If I open that app, there's a chance that I could do something wrong. Then get rid of it. You know, when you look at people who's living away from technology, out in the boonies, out in the mountains, right? Out in the desert somewhere. One thing, they don't have to deal with, you know, sinning with the apps. (laughs) They don't have to deal with sinning with technology. But, you know, people who's living in cities and suburbs nowadays, you know, especially as a Christian, you just can't stop sinning because you have that phone ruling over your life. Yes. I mean, as cliche is to say, right? You know, you have to have rule over your phone. You should be able to live your life without the phone. Yes. That's what I'm saying, right? If you're bound by your phone in this day and age, then I guarantee you, 
you are sinning continuously. Guarantee. Yes. If you're controlled by your phone, how in the world can you have right relations with Lord Jesus Christ? How can you be thinking about lost souls out there? How can you be reading the Bible continuously? How can you be praying continuously? You and I shouldn't be the person like, oh, I forgot my phone. My life is over. You shouldn't. Amen. I forgot my phone. Hey, you know, I could still live my day. Yeah. You know? And even back on the road, right, we used to use Thomas maps. Usually went to place to place by looking at real map. Yes. You don't have to rely on GPS. And people really, really fine. I've, I found places better than GPS. You know, the other day we we're going to street preaching to LA. This GPS did not update the traffic. I mean, accident happened, but it wasn't showing. Right? Almost got stuck there, you know, but got out of it, you know, went the other way. So you can't be relying on it all no. the time. If you're relying on your technology for everything, you know, you got to check yourself. What if one day there's no more technology? Are you going to be a chicken running without your head? Oh, man, you're hitting everywhere, right? You know, it is good that it made something more efficient, but it's done a lot more worse yes. than anything else. Because don't tell me that you're watching, you know, preaching, Bible study all the time. No. Even if, you know, for five minutes you're watching those wicked ads, you know, you're, you're going to fall into sin. Yes. So admit it. You have to really get right with the Lord. I mean, there's a solution, right? You know, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. You have to get right with the Lord. And it starts now. It's not tonight. It's not tomorrow. It starts now. Whatever lust of the flesh, pride of life, and lust of the eyes, you know, those sins have been bothering you. You've been enticed by those things. You know, you have to get rid of it. Amen. And it has to be more than a few days. Yes. It has to be more than a few months. It has to become years and years and years. Amen. Because you don't want to be that relapsed Christian. No. You know, you, you, it's like this. I haven't drank for the last two years. I was alcoholic. And suddenly, you're like, you know what? I'm just going to try once. Work function, you know, they're going to have light stuff. Just a little bit of wine, right? Cooler. What do you know? You become worse alcoholic than ever. One thing about sin is that if you've done it in the past, next time you do it, you're going to do it bigger. Yeah. There's no like a little bit less, right? Oh. That's the scary thing about sin, right? All in. If you cheated on someone in the past, you start doing it again, you're going to do it with multiple people. Yes. And then you're going to become, you know, homosexual. And you're going to go further and further. That's the, you know, perversion. And that's the steps that people take, yes. right? I mean, if you're a gambler, you're not only going to just, you know, drain your savings. You're going to drain your whole family. You're going to borrow from people. And you're going to just ruin your financial once and for all, just yes. like that. Right? And if you're into, I don't know, drugs and stuff, you're not going to just do it for a little bit. You're going to do it for long, long periods of time. And then what's going to happen? You're going to lose your job, lose your family, and then you're going to become a druggie out there yeah. on the street. Yeah. So that's what, how scary sin is. Amen. So you should stop playing with it. Yes, sir. You should think about it. You, know? you should think for a change instead of you know, just doing it out on a whim. Right? Just think about it. Just pray about it before you start sinning again. Yes. Because if you don't stop sinning, there's only destruction waiting for you. Romans 8.13 says, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. And when you die, you're not only going to do disservice to the temple of God, your temple of God, you're going to do disservice to other temples of God. Your wife, your husband, your mom, your dad, everybody else in between. So people f tend to forget, you know, I'm my own. You're foolish. You're not your own only. Man, a lot of people are affected, impacted, influenced by you. 
doesn't matter how old you are. So your actions, people are watching you very intently. It doesn't matter how old you are. And if you're not exemplary, if you don't have a good testimony, even from the littlest thing to the biggest things, you're at fault. At the judgment seat of Christ, a lot of people are going to point at you. And you deserve it. Amen. A lot of people are going to point at me. Because of him, Lord. Because of her. I mean, at the end of the day, Lord's going to, it's your own fault. But when it's your time to be judged, Lord's going to ask you, hey, you remember? You know, that sister, that brother of yours, you know, they pointed at you. And let's play. What were you doing? What were you doing during service? And we have a lot of, I mean, since, you know, it's all viewable and stuff, you know, these days, you know, I don't think anybody's doing, you know, dumb, stupid thing. We had a guy one time during service, even the singing time, he just sat, just doing his phone. Elderly sister was sitting next to him, singing her heart out. And this guy, I don't think he's even saved, just sitting down, just doing his phone. Of course, he's not here anymore, right? Came a little bit. And if he is really saved, what kind of testimony did he have? Yeah. Playing with his phone, just lollygagging during preaching. And obviously, you got to just set a good testimony after good testimony after good testimony. Because what you do is not only light just to the lost people out there. You're also that you know, encouragement or discouragement to brethren out here. It's like this. You've been coming to church for a long time, but you have zero interest in the Word of God. You've been saved for 20, 30, 40 years. You have zero interest in the word of God. What's wrong with you? Right. Okay. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that not, needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. You have to study. Yes. But, ah, uh, you know what? It's not for me. Then who is it for? Right. I thought word of God was for every single Amen. person. Amen then you have to understand, you, got, you have some standard to live up to. So you got to stop sinning. Yes. Stop sinning, that's it. What more excuse are you going to give? Right? You know, my life is hard. Oh, yeah? What about those Christians out there in North Korea? China. Every time they read the Bible, someone could come and raid their home or hiding and they'll be captured and tortured from toe to head. Every single, you know, nails plucked out, limbs get cut off and run over by bulldozers. That's what's happening. And you think that you're okay. You, your life is so hard. Compare your life to those third world Christians out there. They have no running water. Yeah. They just live in a hut. You say, oh, man, I mean, I'm guilty too. Man, I hate these mosquitoes, you know. And they live with mosquitoes. They live with cockroaches. But that's their part of life. They don't, have, they don't even have a food to eat. Think about Christians out there in Africa. Their meal is just dirty milk. They have no meat. They don't have anything, and you complain about me, you complain about food, you complain about every little thing out there, spoil American Christians, yes. right? right? Yes. That's why you start sinning, because you're a complainer. You're just, you just love to complain. Yeah. He has this, she has this, right? I mean, that's lust of the eyes. Yeah. Just before you look at them, just look at yourself, and if that's causing you to sin, solution is what? Get rid of it. Yes. I mean, that's the best solution out there. Get rid of it. You know, I think one of the good testimonies that we had in the past is that you know, a preacher was preaching about worldly music. So some people actually took actions. I mean, I know if, 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 if you're sitting here, if you're listening, and then you're listening to worldly music and you have no guilt in yourself, you know, you're backslidden. I, I mean, you're, you're conscious here with a hot iron, yes. right? You know, things of spirit and things of the flesh you know, they're against each other. Yes, sir. Yeah? So, but if you are, like, immune to it, if you don't think it bothers you Come in on. any way, if you're listening to worldly pop music, rock and roll, rap music, worldly gospel music, right, yeah. Christian contemporary, it doesn't bother you, something's wrong with you. Amen. Check your head and, above all, check your heart. Preach. 
So someone, some people heard it. Not everybody takes action. It's the, just like, you know, I think this is the right ratio. I hope it's not, but it is. You know, when 12 spies went, two came back with good report, mm -hmm. Joshua and Caleb. The rest of them, you know, they create a havoc, chaos. Yes. So one out of six. So if there's like 60 people here, 10 people will actually take action. And I think I'm giving very, I'm being very generous, yeah. right? You know, Lord so if there's, you know, people here, majority of people won't do anything about it. But why would you make yourself that majority who yeah. doesn't do anything about it? You know, majority won't do, uh, majority won't hear well done, doctrine and faithful servant from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Anyways, it's always straight and narrow, like a very few. So when it comes to all those things, right? You know, majority is going to just not listen and do it. But you yourself have to make a choice like today. Yes. Like my heart. You know what? I, I got to stop sinning Amen. once and for all. You know, I, I can't just leave it as just a few days, few weeks. When life gets tough, I go back to it. What's the most common excuse of drug addicts? You know, I was able to come off of it for like two months. Man, but, you know, my mom died. My loved ones died. My dog died, you know. Come up with every single excuse. You shouldn't have any excuse. Amen. Even the worst things that ever happened to you, if you committed to the Lord that you're going to stop sinning, you got to stop sinning. Yes. That's it. What more is to it? Lord had to go through the worst of worst situations, worst of worst torture and pain. He didn't give excuse. He shed all of his blood for you and me. Yes. But you and me, we're always full of excuses, yeah. right? So stop sinning and giving excuses. Just, you know, be honest with God. That's what we always say, right? Just be honest with God. You know, I've been a wretched sinner. I've been a horrible sinner, Lord. I really want to stop sinning. I can't do it on my own. The Bible says I can't do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I'm going to do it. Amen. So now, going, now let's see. So what does happen when you stop sinning for a long time, right? And I'm not saying you don't sin at all. You are continuing to sin. But there are certain sins that you, it, it's like that anchor more than an anchor, it's been chained to your legs. Every time you could get closer to the Lord, it just pulled you back. Every time you're getting more and more spiritual, it just pulled you back. Those things that I'm talking about, you have to stop once and for all. If you do, then these things will happen. Let's turn to the first one. You have peace. You have peace. Let's go to Psalms. Book of Psalm 119, 165. Psalm 119, 165. The reason many Christians live a miserable life is because they don't have peace. They know where they're going after they die. But because they're living in sin, they just don't have that peace. Right? Your mind is always running. Your mind is nervous. Your mind is never at ease. Your mind is always thinking about, oh, man, what if God punishes me right now? If you're saved, Holy Spirit will continuously convict you. Amen. Then you won't have peace. Let it go, let's go to Psalms. Book of Psalms, 119, verse 165. But, you know, if you get right with the Lord and you stop sinning for a long time, this will happen. Psalms 119, 165. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. You're going to have great peace. Man, in this day and life, in this day and age, with all the turmoils out there in the world, the wars, you know, the economy, the politicians, you know, violence and crimes, everything, you could still have great peace. You know what? It doesn't say little peace. It doesn't say regular peace. Great peace. Amen. Great peace to whom? The Bible says, which love thy law. Yes. Which love the word of God. Which keep the word of God. Which do not sin. Amen. Then you have great peace. It's like this, you know. When you line up people, 
And then you're trying to find the guilty parties, right? And then people who are guilty, you know, they can't have peace, right? And then when they don't get caught first time, they're so happy. Oh, I got away with it. But they never have peace. Police drive by they, they try to hide, right? Yeah. When someone tries to talk about that subject, they try to change the subject, yeah. you know? And then you have to be really careful. If you're an angry person, I guarantee you, you're full of sin. Yes. Because, you know, I know how to be angry, right? When you're trying to hide something, you're angry. You know, if someone points out a sin at you, especially your family members or loved ones, first reaction is, you know, I didn't do it. It wasn't me. And then they press on. No, it's you. There's some evidence here and there. And then you start getting angry. How dare you accuse me? Your husband, your wife, your son, your daughter, your mom, your dad, your grandma, grandpa. How dare you accuse me? You don't love me, right? You know, you don't care for me. But come to find out, you're guilty all the time, right? So in order to cover your guilt, you just get angry. Yeah. You're like, you're like those you know, liberals who can't even argue. You can't win any argument. So you just get angry, and you start crying, right? Do your crocodile tears. And afterwards, when the truth is told and revealed, I'm sorry. <laughs> But it's not even a real sorry. But you're today. sorry that you got caught. Yes. Not, you're not sorry that you done the deed. World. You're sorry because you got caught just like Judas. Amen. Judas is carried. Yes. So many Christians are just like Judas, right? You're caught. Your, your hand isn't where it's supposed to be, right? And you're just angry that you got caught. I got away with the last 40 years. I got away with the last 15, 20 years. I got away with the last few months. Why did I get caught? So instead of getting right with the Lord, instead of having that great peace by loving the word and doing what the word says, what you do is you come up with a new device. You come with a new plan. Okay, next time I'm going to do this so that I won't get caught, right? <sighs> yeah. I should have changed my shoes, you know. My shoes gave it away. Repent. Oh, man, my wallet, man, it had that receipt. Next time, I'm going to make sure I get rid of the wallet. Oh, man, next time, you know, my cell phone was too visible. I'm going to make it super dark so that nobody could ever see it, right? You know, if you, unless you have your eye problem and if you want to really save batteries, you know, of your phone, I mean, what do you, I don't even know how you could see it or read the letters, right? A lot of times you do it because you got something to hide. Yes. Anything involves darkness, involves sin, and because of, you know, you want to hide something, yes. right? You know, if you're that Christian, if you don't get out of that habit and lifestyle, you're just going to die. You're just going to, because Bible promise, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Amen. There's going to be destruction waiting for you. And that's what the Word of God says. I mean, if you fear God, if you fear the God of the Bible, man, I'll be scared if I'm in your shoes because you're playing with atomic bomb, literally. Literally, it's going to just disintegrate you. Your life will fall apart once and for all. So stop hiding from human beings, but number one, stop hiding from God. Amen. And number one, and then stop giving excuses. So, so if God has convicted you today, which you should everybody, right? Yes. Because we all have sin problems. Amen. And if he did not move you or touch you in any way, I don't even know what to say. Yeah. Right? You're you're so far backslidden if you're saved. I mean, I don't even, and probably only the chastisement will wake you up. You know, there are certain people, they're so down in the dump that you can't really do anything. But many people, you're like at that middle point. You take one foot to the right where God is, you're going to have some help. Your life's going to turn around. If you take one to the left, closer to the devil, the world, and the flesh, then it's going to be over. Yeah. I mean, don't let the door hit you as you go out, but it's going to be over. It's got to be over because to me, when you play with God's word, when you play with, you know, God's grace and mercy, 
to your lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and your pride of life, your sinful ways, it will eventually blow up. And as you and I are hearing this message, it's going to happen sooner than later. Because Lord always gives good amount of warning, you know, throughout the years, right? How many times have you and I heard this preaching about sin, sin, playing with fire, playing with sin? You got to stop sinning and sinning and sinning. But obviously, you and I are so dumb and stupid, we don't act upon it like we should. Amen. But it's about time. Yes. Like all of us, like change our ways once and for all. Start from here. I mean, think about what Lord really did for you. Mm-hmm. Think about if you are created to give glory to God, then do things that will give glory to God. Yes. So you have great peace, right? And secondly, what would you have, right? What happens when you stop sinning for a long time, right? You have joy and happiness. Simple as that. Amen. You know, when I don't sin and for a long time, I have a lot of joy and happiness. It goes to number one. I have great peace. Nothing really bothers me, right? Because I'm really right with the Lord. And like, you know, world could be heading down, straight down to, you know, black hole. I mean, it doesn't bother me, yeah. you know, because I know the Lord's going to take care of me and my loved ones, right? I'm like, you know, it's fine. You know, I, have, I could find that joy. Like, man, I, I could still read the word of God. I know I'm not going to burn in hell. Man, I, Lord gave me grace and mercy to witness to others, right? Amen. Share the gospel. And then we're still living in a free country. Woo. Man, still be able to talk and hear and see. Amen. Able to enjoy some good food out yes. there because of his blessing. Thank Man, you. I have joy and happiness. Yes. Man, I, I could actually be at a church. Amen. Local church. Yeah. And that's joy and happiness in itself. Thank you, Lord. fact that he led me to King James Bible. Man, that's a great joy, Amen. right? So all this come because you're away from sin. Yes. You will never have true joy and happiness if you're living in sin. You got to stop sinning. Amen. That little joy and happiness that you have is temporary. Very, very short period of time. It's like a vapor. It's going to just vanish away because it's all from your own ways and own pleasure. That's why it has to be long-lasting. You know, you cannot have true joy and happiness if you stop sinning for a few days. It's going to come back. That dreary, sad, you know, I mean, just like a no happiness in your life. That's why a lot of people are miserable. A lot of Christians are just miserable because they're continuously living in their sin. Yes. You know, You're, you're a rebel, you know. What's that stupid saying, rebel without a cause? You know, you're a rebel with a cause. Your cause is your flesh Amen. and your pride That's good. and your lust. Yes. You know, when will you ever get rid of your rebellious ways, right? Rebellion is idolatry, yes. right? I mean, you're an idolater. I mean, don't think that just Catholics or any other cults out there, oh. you know, worshiping Mary statue and all the saints statue, which aren't even saints. Saints are who received Christ and saved in the New Testament, in the yeah. church age. They're the saints. You and I are saints. Woo. They're not saints. They're just idolatry. I mean, they're, they're idols, right? I mean, you're just like that. You're worshiping those idols every time you're rebellious. Yes. That's why, you know, I appreciate it. And I receive a letter from sister in Germany, right? And then she's very appreciative. She says her English is not good. I mean, our, a lot of our English are not good, right? You know, yeah. you know, English is like second or fourth language. A lot of it doesn't matter. What God cares is about your heart. Yes. If word of God convicts you, touches you, and you want to do what he says, it's going to help you. It's going to help you grow. Amen. It's going to help you from stop worshiping those idols in your life. And that covetousness you continuously have. Being re- rebellious to the word of God and the preaching. The worst thing that you could ever do is when the Holy Spirit convicts you through preaching, through praying, through the Word of God, that you reject it. Mm-hmm. Then it's a further away you're going to be from the right relationship with the Lord and closer you are to the devil's ways. Mm-hmm. The saddest thing to see 
happen to a Christian is that they lose their joy as a Christian. They lose happiness as a Christian. They have no relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. They miss out on blessings. They don't have fruit of the Spirit, according to Galatians 5.22. But opposite, if you stop sinning for a long time, again, not 100%, but you stop sinning those sins that have you know, held you down for such a long time, you're going to have great peace, joy, happiness, and you're going to have health. Right? You're going to have good health. Even if you're going through bodily aches and everything, your mind will be healthy. That's what you want. Amen. There are a lot of people who's healthy outside, man, but their mind is so polluted, corrupted, and they're sick. Yes. If you have a clear mind, God can always use you, Amen. no matter what. If you don't have a clear mind, if you have a dirty mind, right, proud heart and stuff, God cannot use you. But if you stop sinning for a long time, your spiritual health will get healthier and healthier and healthier. And then what? You have a lot of blessings that come your way. Many of you Christians, including myself, you lose God's blessing because of your sin. Think about it. God wants to bless you, but you're sinning. He's like, nope. Next person. Oh, yes. I mean, it's not always... Physical, material, a lot of times it's spiritual, right? Yes. I'd rather be spiritually sound than be a millionaire, right? Yes. I'd rather have that spiritual growth than a physical monetary growth. Because that's going to last. Other ones just will disappear. Yes. Think about it. If the economy goes south today and then, you know, all the properties and stocks and everything goes down, whatever you have in your bank account becomes like nothing. God. Like, like you, you need like a million bucks to buy a loaf of bread, yeah. you know, like some countries out there, right? It becomes trash, yes. right? But what you have with the Lord, it lasts. Amen. It's long lasting. And when finally, you know, when you stop sinning for a long time, you actually bear the fruit of the Spirit. You actually bear it. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. So I'll end with this. Now just think about your life. Man, are you, have you stopped sinning for a long time? Or are you Amen. continuously sinning over and over and over? You have your highs and lows, but it only lasts for a day or two weeks, even months. You've got to stop sinning for a long time. Don't rely on yourself. Don't rely on the environment. You have to rely on it, only on Lord Jesus Christ. He has to be yes. that final authority like the Word of God. Yes. And just... If not going to please him, I don't care. Whoever feelings I hurt, because I got to stop. Yes. And I have stopped, and I'm going to continue to stop. Amen. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. So let's start from verse 7, 16. So you want to be sanctified through the Spirit, and the Spirit give victory over sin, and some of the sins are listed here. This I say then, verse 16, Galatians 5. Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. That's why I said, you know, when, we, when preacher preached about the worldly music and stuff, they're against each other, Spirit and the flesh. Yes. So I know some people just threw all of their, back in the day, threw all of their CDs and tapes away. Yes. In the trash can. That's, that's what you're supposed to do. Yes. You can't be saving it in the back of the attic. You can't be hiding it under your bed. You got to throw it away. Amen. Dirty magazines, throw it away. Yes. Dirty apps, throw it away. Yes. You know, if you're phony stuff, you can never have control over your phone, throw it away. I'll help you get a, you know, <laughs> like 2,000 Blackberry or something yeah. or Nokia, right? Amen. You have to. I mean, yes. if you don't do it, then this is what you're going to become. Like, like, look at verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. And some of you Christians, you're going through this right now. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, 
that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So, I mean, you're still going to go to heaven. You're going to lose all your rewards. You have zero rewards as a Christian. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with affections and lusts. So, your flesh is crucified once and for all. Amen. So, you want to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit? You got to stop sinning. Simple. And when you stop sinning, you're going to get closer to the Lord. When you stop sinning, you're going to read the Bible more. When you stop sinning, you're going to pray more. When you stop sinning, you're going to mind the things of God. Yes. When was the last time your whole thoughts, every being of you, were just full of mind of things of God? Not the things of the world, not the things of the flesh, not the things of the devil, just purely. And then, just like you know, I preach in the past, whatever you, whatsoever you do, you're doing it heartily as unto the Lord. Amen. I can't say that I'm like doing drugs and say I'm doing best for the yeah. Lord. I can't say that I'm smoking. I can't say, you know, I'm doing this wicked stuff and no. say I'm doing, no. But if you are stopped sinning, if you have stopped sinning for a long time, and you're continuously trusting in the Lord for strength and guidance, you're going to do it. You could, you could actually have that victorious Christian life. Yes. Who is the victor today? Who wants to be the victor when the Lord calls you up? Let's pray. Dear Father, we play around with this fire, this bomb called sin. We take it so lightly. And we miss out on many blessings when we stop sinning for a long time. Heavenly Father, it's impossible if we we're going to do it. But we need to trust in you. We trust in you, Lord. And Lord God, if you're not, if you, if a person doesn't have Jesus Christ in their heart, their Lord and Savior, they have zero hope. The best that they could do, they're going to do their best and burn in hell. Everyone who's listening, if you don't know where you're going after you die right now, you have eternal problem. If you know you're a sinner, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you know that Jesus Christ died for all your sins, but God committed his love toward us, in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. And if you have repenting heart, Lord is not willing, and he should perish, but that all should come to repentance, turn from your ways, and you believe that Jesus is God, and if you want to trust him as your Lord and Savior and get saved from hell, through this prayer, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior once and for all. Get saved from hell and have the hope of stop sinning and giving glory to God in your life. If you don't know where you're going right now, if you never believe that Jesus Christ is God who died for your sins, believe that his blood can wash away your sins and receive him in your heart as your Lord and Savior, through this prayer, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in your heart, not your life, not your brain, in your heart, Amen. and get saved from hell. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. With all my heart, the best way I know how, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord. I only trust precious blood of Jesus Christ to wash away all my sins. Thank you, Lord, for dying for all my sins and coming into my heart as my Lord and Savior and saving me from hell. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you pray with all of your heart, then you're saved. Because the Bible says, he that has the Son has life. He that has not the Son of God has not life. Amen. These things have I written unto you that believe in the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. But as men received him, whom? Jesus Christ. To them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. Once saved, you're forever saved. Amen. Lord God, I pray that all of us who saved, Lord, Help us to take this seriously in these last days, yes. to get right with you, not tomorrow, not day after, today, right now, and get rid of these sin problems once and for all, and live a holy life 
bringing more glory to you, having that joy and happiness, bearing you know, fruit of the Spirit, Lord God, and having that great peace. And above all, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.